as a question for Matt. Um, tell us about the finale of Roubaix. <laughs> if I look back at it now, it um, would have been nice to have had a Team Sky rider on the podium, so it's a bit disappointing. Um, there's been uh, a bit of criticism of our tactics, I guess, uh, in the final of Roubaix, and we had so many riders there in the finish. Um, but to be, you know, in hindsight, maybe we could have done a few things differently. But uh, when you look at it, um, going into the final, we were very well represented. That was the goal to get as many riders into the into the last uh, part of Rubay as we could, and that was our best chance of winning. Um, not always the strongest rider wins Rubay, but uh, this year was definitely the case. So when we had the numbers there, um, and Bonin rode away with uh, 55. I think 55, 60 kilometres to go. I wasn't particularly panicking because I felt like uh, he was quite isolated and we knew where he was. But um, looking back, maybe that should have been a moment of panic. Um, and uh, yeah, we got to a certain point after Edval dropped off and maybe we should have started racing for the podium instead of um, continuing to chase him when it was clear that he was the strongest rider and he was going to win. So uh, a bit disappointing, but... Um, you know, it was great to see that the whole team was there and we definitely after, I mean, we were one of the strongest teams in the race and uh, that's what we pretty much worked on in the Classics is being being strong as a team. Uh, we just need to finish it off and can't wait till Sky wins one of those monuments, whether it's um, Paris Roubaix or Milan San Remo, it's still missing. We need to win one of those. Can you tell me, um, when you're heading towards that critical, the critical moment in a race like Paris Roubaix and it's it's full on, it's hectic. There's cobbles coming up and there's booning up the road and there's the tendency, because there's so much happening, to be disorganised. What does happen on the road? What's going on? Are you talking to team car? Are you talking to teammates? Or are you just in, you're focused on what's going on and working through in your mind what's going to happen next? Yeah, um, I mean, it's quite easy to sit back later and have a look at the video or, or think about the race later and, and you can think quite qu clearly um, but at the time yeah we've got radio communication to the directors um, but even that sometimes you you can't hear because either interference or just concentration you're just concentrating so much on on riding your bike you might be in the middle of a cobbled section and um, you know either you know even though you can probably actually hear the radio um, you just miss bits I guess it's um, like being a fighter pilot, you know, you're just kind of in the zone and, and you can't take in too many things at once. We're all males, we're not female, so we can't <laughs> multitask that well. Um, so, yeah, no, I mean, the, the, the team car's there and they're talking to us, um, but it's, it's, hard, it's hard to think clearly and, and concise and to, when you're in that situation and you're trying to do the numbers and, and think about, and you just... There's so many things going on that it's, uh, it's hard to, to make good calls out there and you're in a fair bit of pain. Um, and then that's not even taking into account how other people are feeling, so you've got to try and take that into account, so it's, it's not easy. How, how many days after Rubay does it take you to recover? Like the feet in your hands and your legs and no. everything else? I'm a, uh, Rubay's my race, so only You're one. okay. I'm all right. <laughs> All right. Question from anybody? We have a question down here at the front. Hi, guys. Um, how's Cav fitting in with the team and, you know, bonded up with your lead-out trains and that? So how's oh, Cav getting on with the team you're looking and at me how again. is things going with the lead-out train? Yeah, the, the lead-out train, I mean, I, I hadn't worked with Cav before this year and uh, I did, uh, there's a few guys in the team that have and... And they assured me that, uh, that he wasn't as bad as uh, he might seem from the outside. Um, Mark's um, very focused and uh, he actually gets the best out of his team. I think Mark knows that he needs a good lead-out train to win. I don't think he does. I think he's you know, the most talented sprinter that there is. But he, he likes to rely on a good lead-out train and... He knows by motivating the team and making sure that he gets the best out of every rider, he has the biggest chance of winning. So he definitely motivates us um, and, and he also appreciates every rider in the team, but he expects 
he expects people to be at their best and to be doing 100%. Um, and he does that himself and he expects that from all of his teammates. Uh, he's been great to work with and, and, and it's been really good. The lead out train didn't really work in Oman. We had a few a few issues there. Um, we brought it together in, uh, in Kerner. Um, Torino, we had a bit of success. Um, and hopefully that'll just get better and better. But uh, no, he's been really good to work with and, and uh, he's, he definitely brings the team to another level and expects, expects a lot from, from his teammates. Alex, do you want to add anything to that? Because you, you train with him now and then, don't you? Yeah. Um, for me, it's been like a massive learning curve with Mark on the team because I'm sort of new to the, like, the whole lead out um, sort of situation where you just buy into a race where you have one winner and if he doesn't win, then sort of no, then no one else gets a result. Um, so it's just a completely selfless act. And he, he, I mean, one thing I have learned is he really appreciates it. You know, he goes, it's, um, I mean, getting a team win and one thing, but what you're doing is you're riding for someone who, firstly, you know if you drop him off with 250 metres to go correctly, it's not a case of if he win, he, he will win. Um, and then you know that, you just it's difficult to describe how much he appreciates it but you go away feeling like you've all won the race even though it's mark standing on the podium or mark taking the trophy it um you know afterwards at dinner and everything it feels like we've all won the race christian you're probably more we might think of you more with um brad wiggins in mind potentially looking after him on the road uh, you've ridden a lot with Brad. We're talking a lot with Ka about Cav here, but what's it like to have Brad in the team? Does he work differently? Uh, does he motivate differently? Uh, you know, what, what's it like working with him? Um, I mean, in general, um, you have to have a leader like Brad or Cav, who everyone can look up to, can. Um, um, yeah, who push everyone? Who push everyone? And um, we want to give our best to support them. And um, yeah, you need you need a kind you need you need a leader like them. And um, it's always nice when um, when they say thank you for the job you did. And um, yeah. How many days racing you done so far this year? Any idea? Me? Yeah. I don't know. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't count. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a few though, yeah. <laughs> not 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 that many. It was okay. Yeah. And what's your program for the rest of this season? What's next? Um, my last race was uh, Wube. Now I have a little race break until Bayern. Then I will start um, at the uh, Dauphiné and. I hope I will make it into the tour team. Okay, so Dauphiné and then hopefully Tour de France. Um, next question from anyone. We've got a microphone there, so thank you. Oh, good afternoon. Are any of the panelists participating in the Giro d'Italia this year? And if any so, help? what are your thoughts? Are any of you, the team, going any to be in Giro d'Italia starting in Denmark? Sorry, I missed that question. So can we just repeat it? It was, will any of you guys be participating in the Giro d'Italia in Denmark? Okay, so any of you guys in the lineup for the Giro d'Italia no. starting in Denmark? No, I guess, guess the reason that all three of us are here is that, that we're not in a race program at the moment. Um, so none of us will be at, at the Giro. Um, Who's the team for the Giro, do you know? Oh, that's, that's highly confidential. <laughs> <laughs> For those that don't know, I have haemophilia, and that's a uh, it's a blood clotting disorder, which basically means uh, once I s if I haven't had my medication, once I start bleeding, I don't stop, uh, which could be problematic. <laughs> um, Slightly, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but the you know it's well controlled by my doctors at the NHS and um, my team and m mum and dad as well. They and everyone else seems to do the panicking so I don't have to. I mean, 
if you go into a race concerned about crashing or worried, then you're sort of already taking yourself out of the race. So I kind of let my mum and my team do the panicking for me. I mean, my mum goes as far as to think that all mothers of haemophiliacs should have a facelift on the NHS because of the amount of worrying she's done. <laughs> but, uh, but you're recovering now from that injury, which is... Uh it's good, so we'll be back on the bike soon. Yeah, I've got a cool scar as well. <laughs> that, is, that is one scar. Right, next question in the middle there. Thank you. Hi, guys. Uh, what's a normal training week like for you in the lead-up to a race, and how much do you taper off? Okay, so let's take it individually, shall we? So, Matt, um, do you want us to take, say, a one-day race? Is that... <laughs> okay. So we're heading for a race like... Harry Roubaix, because you two have just, just yeah. ridden that. What's a normal week leading up to it, and then when do you start tapering off for yeah. a race like Roubaix? I mean, for Perry roubaix I guess I started training in November last year. Um, I mean, the whole classic seasons, we, I did a big base, and everything was leading up to there. So we start in, in uh, December, January, just doing base miles, and they can be, I guess, 20 to 30 hours a week. Um, so we'll be doing generally doing three-day blocks so uh three days on with a rest day um they can be anywhere up to you know four five six hour rides and then a rest day and the rest day will be a couple of hours um and then after that we we start the racing so i mean before tour down under was the first lot of racing just a couple of days kind of taper and then so part of that whole build up to the classics is using some different blocks of racing so I did uh, Tour Down Under, Tour of Oman, a um, couple of one-day races in Belgium, and then Torino Adriatico was the big kind of block. While the guys were racing for GC in uh, Paris-Nice, um, where, where we go won there, which was great. We had a classics team in Torino who were just there. You know, we were racing for stages, but we were generally doing kind of our last bit of um, intensity and, and long training for the classics. Um, so that, you know, that was kind of the end of our training and then um, coming into the races, it's only really two or three easy days um, before, before a classic and those classics, that whole three weeks, the classics are pretty much, you've got a couple of days in between so they're kind of almost perfect to just race, recover, race, recover so there's not a lot of training to be done. So the bulk of the training is done in November, December and then go from race to race in a kind of a phase plan to get the best performance. 